Welcome to video five. Oh, <laughs> look at those paws, they're perfect. Pudge, would you like to tell them what we're doing today? Mm-hmm, and? Whoa, good job, you got all your lines this week. Um, would you like to tell? Oh, okay. So, Pudge, would you like to start this video? No, 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 don't escape. Um, so Pudge is not really into the whole filming thing today and I promised him that when we started this channel, if he wasn't, if his heart wasn't in it, I wouldn't force it. So Pudge is going to be a little bit absent from this video, um, but what I'm going to do is we're going to show you all of our anthuriums and then I'll show you my, like my top like five or eight at the moment and then yeah i'll wrap it up it's going to be a short one this week because we are both very very tired and yeah what else would you like to say do you want to see all my anthuriums would you like to take us into the anthurium montage cool okay let's get started Just a forewarning before I start this video, it's really hot in this apartment right now. I can't turn on the AC or else the audio is going to pick it up. Pudge is in a very, very clingy mood. 
I don't know if he has a tummy ache or what it is, but he won't leave my side, meaning you're gonna hear all of his little like snorts and snores. And if you're wearing headphones, it's gonna be amplified. So just keep that in mind as you watch this. But Pudgy comes first, so I'm not going to like lock him in a room because he's gonna be really upset. I'm gonna try and make this quick because um, I'm sitting in the sun, as you can see, and I can feel my soul melting as I speak. But I just wanted to like do a small highlight on some of the anthuriums that I just love the most and kind of give like a little bit of, I guess, the backstory on its care. And, and then, yeah, we'll wrap it up. So at number eight, we have the Anthurium crystallinum. And this one might come as a surprise to some of you, but you know it is one of my favorite i know that they're like easier to find and they're like generally more common but i love this one for a lot of reasons um one being that i find them really easy to keep i've imported a good amount of crystallinums to date and i have really good success rate um acclimating them to like canadian environment um to low humidity these, this is a brand new leaf and they just unfurl with no problem without, you know, kind of eating itself if you know what I mean. Like anthuriums tend to sort of just like disintegrate if you don't give them sort of like optimal conditions when they're first unfurling and they have all these marks on them. But this one is like pretty pristine and it's living in... I want to say humidity is like 40% in my Millsville cabinet right now. So... This thing is a champ. Um, so I really love crystallinums. I love the venation. I love the texture of these leaves. I love the leaf shape. These cute little sinuses. They're just perfect. So if you're looking for sort of a starter anthurium, I definitely recommend the crystallinum. Next up is the anthurium forgetii. I do have two forms here. I have a dark form and just like a regular or silver. I often see this one sold as dark form because the leaves can get pretty dark, but my understanding is that the dark form is the one with no crystal, crystal, <laughs> with no silver venation. Um, you can see it's sort of just like this neon, this neon color. And uh, yeah. They're just both so cute. I don't really have a preference of which one I like more. I don't discriminate against any Forgettii. I think they're all so adorable. I love that they look like little turtle shells. Um, I used to have turtles when I was little, so this, yeah, this is just like my little turtle anthurium. I love the shape. I love the venation on this one. The texture is just like any other anthurium. This one, is a little bit more um, rigid, I guess. It's very, very similar texture-wise, like in terms of the velvetiness, but this one has a, just a little bit more like of a bumpy surface, if that makes sense. And you can sort of see it in the sun here. Um, but they're both so beautiful, and I, I wouldn't say that these ones are like super low maintenance. I would say they're a little bit more high maintenance than a crystallinum in terms of like growing leaves to be really really nice and um, like pristine looking I guess I don't really like using that word when talking about plants because I don't think that the expectation of growing plants should be like to aim for perfect pristine leaves but anthuriums can be sort of finicky in that the new leaves require sort of a certain kind of like light and humidity to grow without um, very visible damage like this one. Um, I did not really touch this one as it was uh, hardening off. And actually I didn't really fuss with either of these while they were opening up, but you can see there's still a good amount of like cosmetic damage on them. Um, so yeah, you know, with crystallinums, you can like just toss them around and the leaves will still be perfect. But I find with Forgettii leaves, it's like if you see it, if you see it opening, don't touch it. Don't take an Instagram photo of it. Just leave it. <laughs> so the next one that comes out of this one, I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fuss with it because I do want to see a leaf with like as little cosmetic damage as possible just to like say I grew one and then we'll go back to normal But yeah, this one's a great plant. I really really love uh, Forgetti eyes. 
Number six is kind of a sad one. This is my Anthurium Roqueanum, which used to be like just absolutely majestic. But unfortunately, Thrips entered this house um, uninvited. And uh, yeah, it just, it feasted on it. And I didn't really notice it because I've never really had a problem with pests in my exos. I find that like, it's been like a, like a fortress, but they managed to sneak in and it picked one of my most favorite plants. Um, and yeah, this is sort of what we're left with. In my first ever YouTube video, it had two leaves on it and that one I had to cut off because it completely yellowed. And I'm drying it now because I didn't have the heart to throw it away. And I will do the same with this one. But you can just kind of see all of those yellow patches and uh, it's not gonna come back from that, unfortunately. I find that with thrips damage, even if you're able to get rid of them um, early, Sometimes the effects that it leaves after um, is sort of irreparable. And I really don't mean to like scare you if you've never had thrips, but there is a good reason why I hate thrips so much. I actually started my Instagram because I wanted to spread awareness about thrips because it took a lot of plants that I love and um, I wish I had all the information I know now um, back then. But even with, you know, sort of like proper safeguards against preventing a full-on thrips outbreak, sometimes it's inevitable and they just, you know, they'll live where they want to live. And although I'm very sad about the loss of these two leaves, um, I have faith that we'll make a comeback. We've done it once and we'll do it again. It's springtime now and I'm feeling really good about these roots. The chonk is um, nice and healthy, so yeah, give her some time, she'll be back. I'm gonna try and get this all in the frame, but I think I'm gonna be unsuccessful. Um, this is my Big Mama Anthurium vitarifolium, and um, I don't know if you can tell, but I love strap leaf anthuriums. Basically anything strappy, it doesn't matter if it's an orchid or even like a strappy hoya or a strappy philodendron, I just love long, leaves that's sort of my weakness the vitarifolium does not quite have the texture that most anthuriums have you can see in the sun it's got a little bit of a like a shimmer but it's very matte to the touch i can't really explain what this leaf feels like it's very unlike anything else but i love it it's been a really great plant for me i find that it's lived really well in low humidity. I basically took this home and I just stuck it in 30% humidity and it didn't shed any leaves. It still has all of the leaves that it came with besides the one that snapped off when I brought it home, but that doesn't count. I've had a lot of conversations with people on Instagram about vitarifoliums and it seems like it's a hit or miss. People either like cannot grow them at all or they just have a lot of success with it. I will say in my experience, vitarifoliums grow really great um, just as a normal house plant outside of a greenhouse, but you have to be patient with acclimation. So like I said, it didn't naturally drop any leaves um, from like stress or acclimating down, but the newest leaf in my care is this sort of like wonky, wonky guy and vitaria vitaria <laughs> can you tell the sun is like melting me i'm so hot vitar foliums tend to throw out these like weird leaves in low humidity and it'll probably do it for a few leaves before it's like fully like okay i guess i'm just like living in low humidity now so give it time it'll give you like nice long beautiful leaves like this if you can be patient. I had a lot of success growing this plant purely in moss for a really long time. It's in soil now and I have no drainage holes on this one. There's a bit of algae buildup because I'm using um, Marfil, which is a marine phytoplankton based soil enhancer. Um, so I've just got to like get this cleaned up because it looks kind of gross, but otherwise it's really happy. Number four is this sort of obscure Anthurium hybrid. This one was sold to me as a cross between an Anthurium papillolaminum and an Anthurium dressleri. Do I know that it's that for sure? I have no clue. Um, but all I really care about is that I love it and 
it crosses off a lot of boxes for me um, in terms of what I love about dark leaf anthuriums. There's a ton out there. There's so many hybrids. Um, of course, I'd love to have them all, but that's not practical for me. I'm not really willing to shell out hundreds or thousands of dollars on um, beautiful anthuriums. So I will appreciate them in other people's care and just kind of be happy I've got this guy. I didn't, I mean, I still spent a decent amount, but you know, I was still able to pay my credit card bills on time. So yeah, this is just, um, it's a great plant. I've only had it for a little bit of time, so I don't really have much to say about like the care and um, you know, how I find that it grows, but I will probably do an update maybe at the end of spring um, and see how much this guy has grown because you can see how small this leaf is. I don't even know if it's focused. I can't see anything because it's so sunny. You can see how small this leaf is compared to the one that came after it. So there's pretty um, substantial growth between the two leaves. And I don't know how big this leaf is gonna get. It's the first leaf after import. So it could be a bit stunted. It could be a monster. We don't know at this point, but yeah, I love this one. Number three was sold to me as a Magnificum hybrid, and this one is labeled as a red mag. I don't know if it's a red mag. I don't even know if it has mag parentage. The petioles aren't square at all, um, but I just know I love it. I feel like if I had to guess, it's sort of a nice little mix of like a Dresslerai and I guess maybe a mag, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I'm gonna say it's a red mag because that's what it was sold to me as, but I just like was stunned when I saw this because this, I think it's the leaf shape that does it for me. It's like a heart. <laughs> it's just so unique. Um, it's like so round up at the top. I just love it. I love, I love how the silver in the venation sort of bleeds. Like it looks like it's like bleeding through to the green and yeah, it's um, it's pretty incredible. So I love this one. I love how it's got this very subtle, like very very subtle pink sinus, and I don't I don't even think that the camera's capturing it, but it's very slightly pink, just right up here, and then the edges of these um, leaves are also like this cute pink color. And yeah, there's really not much else to say about this one. I just, I'm super happy to have it. I'm excited to see how it grows and how it sort of changes as it matures. Um, but yeah, like look at this one leaf and how like it just bleeds a little bit right there. Just, ugh, I love this one. Okay, we are getting really close to the end here. Um, this is an Anthurium politiflorum. I can actually remember the day that I saw one of these on Instagram for the first time and I think I gasped so loud that like I felt a pain in my chest. <laughs> um, I just like knew that I had to have it. I like was obsessed with everything about it. I just, I love strap leaf anthuriums. I love the texture of this leaf specifically. When I saw photos of it, I was like, oh, it probably looks better in photos than it does in real life but actually it's like the opposite. It's like even better in real life. I find that the the leaf texture of this is often compared to a Viroquianum and I don't find that to be very accurate. A queen has like a very velvety, like a velvety touch, whereas this one, it's like almost silky in a way, if that makes sense. Um, so it's got this nice shimmer plus like a really like smooth, silky feel to it. And it's just like, it's just so good. And then I love this really strikingly white and protruded sort, sort of like central vein. I know that there's like an actual word for this and I can't think of it right now, but um, yeah, this one is great. I actually got this one as a one leaf cutting from a local collector. They were really hard to find before, but they're getting a bit more common now and it's given me these two cutie little leaves and it's working on a third. So yeah, I can't wait to see how this one grows. I think eventually I'll get this one mounted, maybe, like on a piece of like cork bark, but yeah, right now I'm just kind of working on beefing up these leaves because you can see 
how much of a difference there is between the one that came before it and then the one that came after it, which was this one. Yeah, if you love shimmery leaves, if you love strap leaf plants, this is the one for you. Okay guys, last but not least, uh, I'm melting. I'm literally melting and there's like soil all over my couch. We have this guy. Sometimes I can't even believe this is in my house. I have to like pinch myself. This is an Anthurium Dark Phoenix and I feel like the name just suits this plant so well. Like I couldn't think of a better name for it. it just sounds so badass. Um, this is an Anthurium Papillolaminum crossed with a Dresslerae. Let me move the camera so that we can get some better light because it's kind of dark now. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> I found the light. Okay, yeah, I just, I, there's not really much to say about this one. Um, I think, in my opinion, it's got the perfect leaf shape. It has the perfect venation. I love that it's so like, almost invisible and subtle, but it's very much there. Um, it's got like this nice quilted, like quilted look to it. It's dark and it's velvety and it's shimmery and it's just, it is everything an Ethereum should be and more. I'm so grateful to have this one in my collection. It has rooted like a dream. It's doing really well in moss and I plan to keep it in moss for um, a long time. And uh, yeah, we'll see how, how this one does as it matures. Pudge, <laughs> would you like to say bye to everyone? It was a short one this week, huh? We're tired. We're tired, aren't we? He's surrounded by all his favorite toys. Um, this one's from his Auntie Lizzie. This one is from me. And this one's from his Auntie Alice. And um, yeah, I guess we're all showing our favorites today, aren't we? Would you like to say goodbye to everyone? And say thank you for watching today's video. And thank you for subscribing and We'll see you next week. Yeah? All right, you wanna give him a high five? You're probably not gonna give me a high five, huh? High five? Yeah, oh, that was a good one. Bye.